Um, if we're talking about the relationships of the families, mm -hmm. um, what do you see the main idea? Why, why would you use clean language in relationship? If you think clean language was originally developed to help um, adults who'd often been traumatized as children or earlier in their lives mm -hmm. to build a better relationship with themselves. Mm -hmm. To me it seemed really clear that that's some healing that can take place inside your own system, but we could use this to better understand our hidden architecture, our internal systems, and build better relationships right now with our partners, our spouses, our children. And then it's not a therapeutic remedial process. Mm -hmm. It's a going forward process. Why wouldn't you want to know? Why, why wouldn't you want your partner to know what you need when you are at your worst? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you want your partner to know when I'm at my best, I'm like this, and the things that support that, this, are this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, it takes it from a remedial process into a, let's build the best family that we could be. Let's build the best relationship that we could be. Yeah. We always um, come across with a situation like people are so much interested in getting together, so let's be together, let's make a family, let's get married, and then we're going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> then will happen. And now I'm always interested in, I mean, what could you do with that? And what you, what, what I hear that you're saying, like we could heal some stuff which we bring from our families, from our mm -hmm. past, and we could do something very good about that here and now in our relationship and even more to create a better future. Yeah. So then my husband says, I think it's a really good metaphor, he says, you know, I wouldn't live in the same room with the same decoration for more than 10 years. Mm. At some time I would have maybe looked at my curtains or the bed clothes or the colour of the wall mm. and we would have redesigned it. Mm. He said, why on earth wouldn't we as a family want to get together and just check our thinking, check our beliefs? What are the beliefs that we arrived in this family with? Where do they come from? Do they serve us? And then share with one another, what is it we'd really like to have happen? What do we like when we're sad? How do we build trust? How do we like to be asked questions? Mm. How do we like to eat a meal together? Mm. And to actually use the clean questions to re-examine our experience and then yeah, build, a, build a shared outcome. Yeah. for our most personal team. Right. So not to get everything as for granted, mm -hmm. but to re-examine it and just to have a better idea of how is it going on inside our heads and how we could create on, on the basis of that knowledge. Absolutely. And especially when, there's, when there is conflict, mm -hmm. is to just stop for a minute and say, I'm probably making up most of what's got, what I think. Mm -hmm. It's probably not true. Let's just get together and check it out. Let's find out what are each of us thinking? What do each of us want to have happen? Hmm. Now what should we do? It's just a different way of approaching familyhood. Right. Instead of leading and pushing some way, or correcting them, or putting them on board, is to facilitate the family. Instead yeah, so of correction facilitation. Yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. It's actually one of the main issues that people are coming to me like like a psychologist or the coach or the consultant like we have a problem what we need to do mm -hmm. and before answering that question I always need to know what would bring them <laughs> to that point in their life mm -hmm. so how could it happen that this is happening for the moment and then to, to identify where the core is and where the center is so and where is the vector that he would like to go and you were saying that clean language could help that a lot. Yes, I think that it's a little bit similar to when you use clean in business. Mm. The ultimate aim of clean in families would be that you don't need to go to a therapist, that you're a self-organizing, mm -hmm. a self-reflecting system. Mm -hmm. And uh, great. And what if um, you could like meet a person and uh, like he could be your um, the the colleague or the big person who are meeting in some business or coaching environment and he starts to explain the situation which he is or she is in and you notice that this is the pattern that he's talking about this is the system 
So what would be your action? Hmm. It depends on what my it depends on what my contract with him is. Mm -hmm. So one of the things when you learn clean language and you learn to train your attention on patterns that people have, you're able to think, oh, I've seen this before. They're doing it again. Mm -hmm. Or if it's a family, oh. I recognise this feeling. This is the feeling I get just before I shout at my children. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Mm. But I've made that decision to learn that information. Mm. I made the decision to become a facilitator and a team coach. Mm -hmm. If my colleague didn't, mm -hmm. then I must say to him, not, oh, I've noticed you're doing this, that's your pattern, because that's just rude. Mm -hmm. My kids don't like that either. But instead I might say to him, I've noticed there's a pattern that you're doing, that you do something regularly. Do you want me to point it out? You haven't asked me to. Do you want me to point it out? Mm. It's to make it an invitation rather mm. than a label. I've noticed mm -hmm. this, I've noticed mm. that, because that makes you an expert, mm. and that's the antithesis of clean. Right. In clean language, we notice things, and we build relationships, and we ask permission mm. before we start to label other people. Mm. So it's a kind of uh, the, the role of observer and um, the person who could give some information if he would ask for. Yes, right. it's welcome. Thank you.